These are the type of drugs that kill people very easily. There's a very fine line between use and then overdose. It's every day, it's in the newspaper or a different story. It is stuff that people are dying from. Bessel's problem began about 2007, 2008, when it really started taking a national spotlight just within the last year. Uh, but we've had that issue going on now for almost five years. It was presented in such a way so that it was being sold in your average everyday convenience store, but what it really is, it's, is, uh, it's an amphetamine-based you know, drug, and so it has the same effects. It's not meant to be thrown into your bath waters. It's meant to be ingested. It can be ingested in numerous ways. It can be snorted, smoked, injected. Whatever way a uh, user chooses, whatever their choice is, uh, it can be used that way. It's obviously a multi-tiered problem, it's, um, and substance abuse often is. It's a, it's a hybrid of economic issues, it's a hybrid of wellness issues, jobs, employment. It all ties into your overall um, substance abuse problem within a community. It's hard to tell right now what's going to happen. The police no longer treat these as a normal intervention. They go in basically riot geared up when they have any suspicion that bath salts are involved because it's become such a dangerous situation. You're dealing with somebody who is paranoid, with somebody who is psychotic, may have the sensation that their skin is on fire. The body temperature raises to a significant degree. What we've seen very often with people who have overdosed on bath salts is usually stripped down, whether naked or to underwear, um, running around. They may not be running through the streets naked because they're looking for some kind of sexual gratification. No, they honestly believe that their skin is on fire. Uh, or jumping into the river or a lake or scaling the wall of their neighbor's house and to jump into the back swimming pool. We've seen people who get very paranoid. Uh, something is after them, is going to, trying to kill them, going to get them. They can't articulate exactly what it is, but they have that overwhelming feeling. The problem continues to be one that we address as a society. It's um, you, as a substance abuse problem, we want to make sure that you you educate the individual. That's the best way to stop the problem is for people to stop feeling the need to use the bath salts and, and for to understand that the risk is tremendous, that you could die. At this point in the cycle, I mean, the bath salts have become illegal. Uh, they're no longer um, able to be purchased at a convenience store or in a gas station or something like that. Um, however, you're seeing a secondary effect now. So many people began using these substances and experimenting, and now that the um, availability has dried up and they're no longer readily available, people are needing their fixes. We've seen a significant increase in pharmacy robberies, not for money, but for prescription medications. If you go by most pharmacies now, you're going to see security vehicles parked. They're having security officers on duty while they're open. They're, they've had to up you know, their security just for safety reasons because this is happening so often. It's not just a lower income problem. It's not just a substance abuse problem. It is a cultural issue that we, a cultural and societal issue that we have to address. The best way to combat it is education so that people aren't using it to begin with. Um, and that's, that's the best advice you can give them is, is you know, act in, in with you, within your families, within your communities to, to basically patrol you know, what's going on.